Welcome back everyone to yet another episode and in today's special video we'll be taking a look at a beautiful pair of Holcat Oxfords with a Norwegian construction by Altan Bautier Paris. Coming up! I hope everything has been going well. Uh, we're back with another shoe review and shoe showcase and we are staying in France this time because we are going to talk about yet another French brand that has been on my radar for a while now and after Colincourt and Septième Largeur it's time to talk about Altan Boutier Paris and uh, this is a brand that I've been looking at for many years now over two to three years uh, since uh, they came on my radar about their beautiful patinas and exotic leathers and lovely designs and unique aesthetics and it was an opportunity when I spoke to them, I reached out to them and they kindly provided this pair, uh, not for my own use. I kindly requested if they can send me a pair of shoes so I can review them, you know, I have a hands-on experience with a, with a brand, write my thoughts, make a video and then send them back. It's also a great opportunity for me to be unbiased because I don't get anything out of this. And I also keep my wardrobe uh, quite, uh, you know, minimal so I don't need more shoes and I also get to send them back so it's great and a win-win for everyone and talking about uh, Altan Boutier uh, this is a brand that many of you may or you know may not have heard about uh, and it, it comes from France and they have gained in popularity over the last five to ten years However, uh, their first ready-to-wear collection was launched in 1998 I think and even before that they have a rich history of shoemaking uh, from, I think, 1973 uh, when it was uh, the original founder, Sucru, uh, that was originally born in Konya in Turkey, moved to France, learned shoemaking and launched his own bespoke business. And later on when the collections came up and he had to find a name for uh, the actual business, he named it after his son Altan, Altan Bautier. So essentially Altan bootmaker or shoemaker in French. And the only thing that uh, I can tell you is that they've been rising in popularity uh, for all the reasons that I mentioned. I mean, obviously the quality, but also they have a very unique aesthetics. Uh, they're very good with exotic leathers. Patina is the name of the game as is often in, uh, in French shoemaking. And what we're going to do is um, we're going to talk about, of course, we're going to make a close-up and we're going to talk about uh, later the sizing, the availability, pricing, all the details and the thoughts I have on the brand and the shoe and the quality. And of course, in the in-depth uh, close-up that we're going to do right after this, we're going to go through this whole shoe and see, you know, if we can find something we don't like, uh, if there's something great, uh, generally talk about the design, as we always do. So, I thank them again for sending me this pair of shoes and I want you to join me as we take a very in-depth close-up before wrapping up. Let's go! So let's begin with a close-up by talking quickly about the box. Uh, everything arrived, of course, with DHL Express, which is uh, quite uh, safe, consistent and super fast. It will take about like one business day from, uh, the, from France to Italy to me uh, and usually it's two to four business days to the US, for example. The box came in another box, so it was really nicely packed. And here you have the actual box with the shoes, which has sort of, you know, this reddish maroon, brick red kind of color. There's not much going on other than a hole, like the pool hole here. And of course it's branded on the top. And that's about it. Uh, it the lid has a lot of depth, actually, unusual. And here is the actual box. Uh, it's a... Uh, Quite a simple experience, honestly. It has two shoe bags that work really well, and uh, some uh, tissue paper and some dividers. Everything will uh, come nicely packed and uh, safe, so you shouldn't worry about that. But that's it when it comes to the actual unboxing. So let's quickly move on. And now we're going to talk about the actual shoes. So the first impressions were that this is a quite nice and stylish pair of shoes, as you can see. 
Uh, this is a whole cut Oxford, which means that it's cut from one piece of leather. Uh, so you see no seams around other than the one on the back, because that's what connects the whole piece. Of course, there, is, there exists the seamless whole cut Oxford, which has no seam and everything has to be cut perfectly in shape and applied over the last. And this is not the only unique feature that this pair has. Uh, it has, of course, five eyelets. You know, like this is a whole cut, there's, uh, it's just a plain toe, there's no medallions, there's nothing else. However, it does have a very nice, unique construction. Uh, this is a braided stitch, as you can see, and we can, uh, we can call it a Norwegian construction. There are different forms of Norwegian construction. Some of them have braids, some of them are a single stitch, some of them have actually a, a weld. Uh, if uh, you, you use it differently, you can call it a storm weld and uh, so on. And now this particular one, it looks like it's a chain to Norwegian stitch. Uh, if I really look very closely here, I do see something sticking up from the bottom. So it could be that they're actually using uh, a weld or it could be just the leather folded and I'm not seeing it very well right now. In any case, uh, the job is uh, really well done. I can see all the threads. Uh, I can see also uh, below the thread, the chain stitch, you can actually see the sole stitching, which uh, happens last, obviously. And what I also just noticed is that the shoes have a, a bit of a slanted uh, finish to the outsole part here where there's the, the fudging. So it is a bit slanted. Usually when we make shoes, we make them just straight, but uh, I think this matches it quite well. Also, uh, Norwegian construction, it can be anywhere from 180 to 270 to 360. And this model has a 360 way, uh, construction. So it goes all around the shoe. And that's about it because it does not really have any other features when it comes to the, the construction. This is the defining future. And, uh, Let's check the last. The last is called the Stratos, I think, and you can see it right here. And of course, from the other side, uh, it has quite a soft square shape and you can see very low profile. It has a soft square shape um, and uh, it reminds me a lot of the Italian way to make shoes. And uh, this is not strange because the actual uh, construction is made in Naples, Italy which is famous from, uh, for their Norwegian construction. Um, the laces look uh, nice and high-end. Uh, the color is uh, pretty much uh, on uh, what we call crust leather. And uh, it is you know, white or beige, and then they apply the finish by hand. This particular one is called Autumn Leaves, and that's why it has a nice mix of brown and green colors. Think of the leaves on the ground or during autumn time. So about this. And uh, that's about the color. The color is nice. Uh, the leather feels good to, to touch, actually. Uh, it's a bit smoother than maybe um, other heavily patinated shoes I've, I've tried from France. And uh, the stitching, the little stitching that you can see, you know, in uh, small places and of course in the back, it looks to be pretty nice, including the trimming of the lining. And uh, that's about it. There are a few loose threads here and there that uh, seem to be a bit more over waxed, uh, but uh, you know, that has nothing to do with the actual construction. Everything looks great. On the bottom, you have a closed channel sole uh, with a few tags here. Uh, as you can see, it appears a bit chunkier, but this is because, you know, due to the construction, you try to, to keep the proportions similar. So you wouldn't have a bigger outsole here and cut the sole closer and it's a very well job it's a very well done job here uh, i can't see really the channel uh, it has a marking here the shoe is a seven and a half so the small marking as well here um what else uh, i can tell you about this also as you can see the waist is not so tight and not so beveled uh, this is uh, this is not an intentional thing it's like this is how the norwegian shoes are made so you're not gonna get a blind stitch unless you are Stefan Jimenez here uh, so it will always appear a bit you know not as tight in the waist so it's not like they can't do it or the shoes are not as good and uh, about the back here 
there is some a little bit of color missing maybe in the edges like the finishing on the right right on the edge uh, could be a little better there is also a half uh, rubber uh, top lift here which actually goes until the second layer the only thing that i could say is that when i check the heel here which is a difficult part to trim uh, it is the second layer and the top lift are a bit uneven like very slightly maybe half a millimeter so you can't really tell anything but overall the job is very well done now let's take a look at the inside now the inside is quite simplistic as well uh, it has the, the markings and uh, you know what the shoe is about and the sizing it's also impossible to show you it's uh, black with a branded insole and uh, Everything looks nice. It looks that like it has some nice padded support here on the back. And uh, like I said, uh, I swayed it back here on the heel for a little bit, uh, you know, more grip and less slip. And overall it looks nice. Uh, I, I can't say much about the, the inside, right? Uh, it feels good. Uh, the trimming is good. The stitching is good. The padding feels nice. Uh, overall, great job. All exactly what you expect at this price point. So. Now that we talked about the actual shoes, let me give you a nice last look of uh, you know the, the the top of the, and the top and some profile view, of course. So very nice. And let's put them aside and just quickly show you the shoe trees. So the shoe trees are actually made in France. Uh, they appear to be lasted, as you can see also from the profile and everything. Uh, they have. Uh, silver springs my system works nice really well they're also quite hollow so they're quite lightweight very nice and they have a very very nice and easy grip which i prefer from those balls that you have overall very nice i do recommend that you get uh, shoe trees uh, at this price point and for good shoes uh, well definitely get shoe trees anywhere but when it comes for a high-end pair of shoes, I do recommend getting the last two versions of the actual shoemaker. And that concludes our close-up and I'm very happy I had this opportunity and uh, let's move on. And that was the close-up. I hope you got a really nice idea of uh, the features that the shoe has, the shape, the coloring, the construction, general the build quality, you know, including the shoe trees and everything and it was a good experience uh, definitely to finally get the shoes you know see the brand feel everything and get a better understanding how everything is and how they differ from other shoemakers and also other french shoemakers because also this is a very expensive pair of shoes so at least at this price point everything needs to be not perfect but great so Let's talk about the easy things first and the important things for you, which uh, let's start first with availability. For Alton Boutier, there are a few physical locations that you can find them, you know, in France, for example. So if you're in Paris, please give them a visit. You can always find their locations uh, on, on their website uh, under the store locator, but also you can find them online. Their website might be a little bit, uh, you know, complicated in the beginning, but it's easy, you just go and find the different ready-to-wear collections and then you filter what you want. And this particular model, as we said, is the Rock, and it costs about 1,250 euros, which in today's economy is about the same in USD, we would say. So this is a very expensive pair of shoes, but in order to make it, uh, you, you need to spend a bit more time as well, and the construction is way more advanced and by hand, and it's also done in Italy where the labor might be a bit more expensive. So 1,250 US, give or take. And you also get the, the shoe trees, a great construction, a custom patina. And uh, overall, that's pretty good and acceptable, especially compared to some other brands. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, quickly about sizing. Uh, even though these shoes are not for me, uh, I can tell you that they run half a size larger uh, this particular model is a uh, UK 7.5 and, and I usually wear UK 8 in most pairs of shoes, let's say St. Crispin's, Carmina Rain, and uh, Crockett and Jones, etc. And if you are a US 9D in most regular size shoes such as Allen Edmonds, let's say Park Avenues, 
you would also take a UK 7.5, so you would size down half additionally. Of course, very important to always reach out to the retailer, uh, give them, you know, shoes that you already wear, not measurements, not sneakers, and they should be able to help you. But as a general rule, if I went out and bought this particular pair of shoes right now, I would choose half a size down. So, yes, I would wear a seven and a half in these. Uh, now, when it comes to the actual design and shape and overall quality, uh, these are great shoes. And I really like uh, the feeling that they have when I touch the leather. It's, uh, it's a little glossy but it's not as glossy as maybe, let's say, Chez Tiem Largeur that I tried before. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's not as shiny or anything, uh, but I, I do like how softer the leather is, uh, and there's not, you know, a museum patina with too many coatings uh, of uh, wax and uh, polish and colors. So it has a really nice buttery smooth feeling. Uh, the construction overall is great. Um, there are a few threads here and there, uh, but now that I've doing bespoke sh shoemaking, uh, I know how difficult it is to actually make a, a thread by hand, a linen thread by hand. And this one is a bit uh, chunkier, so the change construction, it's probably a seven, I would say maybe it's a seven thread that you have to put together. So it's only understandable. Uh, overall, the shape, really nice. I really like the last. It's quite modern, it's a nice, soft square last and if you're wondering about the back we already maybe touched upon that that due to the construction it's not possible to have like a blind waist or a very very sharper waist uh, it's very very understandable and since this is a 360 construction also you know the back of the shoe it has to be following the shape and it has to be a bit uh, not chunkier but you know it will be a little wider here on every part of the shoe and Overall, it's a great shoe. Shoe tree is really nice, uh, with a nice handle. They feel high quality. They're made in France. Uh, the profile of the shoe, very nice. Uh, it reminds me a lot of uh, these, uh, you know, mix of French, Italian style with a very nice modern design. And uh, the fit was actually pretty good. Now, this particular model, uh, of course, you don't have to buy it in this green patina, which honestly, it's really easy to, to match uh, still. It's, it's just a bit of dark green and generally green is a pretty versatile color and easy to match. Uh, however, you can, you can just choose something else. Uh, they can paint it for you pretty much what, whatever you want. So styling, it really depends. Still, it's a whole cut Oxford. It's generally a bit more, uh, you would say, formalish, uh, depending on the color as well. And also the bit of the construction. But it's, uh, you know, I mean, in this time and age, you can probably wear it with a pair of jeans as well. So, Oxford suits, suit separates are my preferred uh, way. Maybe something textured, too much a bit, uh, the, the Norwegian stitching. It's a pretty good job overall. And um, even though the only problem I can think of is that 1,250 US dollars is Again, it's a very competitive market with uh, a lot of great and maybe not so great, but popular brands. You're around Edward Green, uh, Gatiano Girling, Paolo Scafora, uh, around San Crispins, it's a Norman Villa Alta, etc. So it is a competitive range. Uh, however, their, you would say, not advantage, but their pro is that indeed they have, they have character, they have identity. Uh, after you see pictures or, or just the shoes, after a while and some experience, you understand and you recognize that this is a, a shoe by Altan Boutier. Whether it's the patina, whether it's the styling, whether it's the exotic leather. So it's a, it's a lovely shoe. Uh, it's a, it seems to be good quality. Unfortunately, I cannot use it to tell you how everything ages. But since the Norwegian construction is made in Napoli, uh, really the Italians are experts in that. And it shows their dedication that they found a workshop that, you know, can make the Norwegian construction proper, I expect these to last. And, you know, best calves come from pretty much Italy and France. Uh, so great, great stuff. Uh, I'm very happy I had the opportunity to, to try this brand and showcase it to you. And uh, it's something that I would like to own uh, later. And, uh, you know, maybe even their Blake construction shoes, 
sometimes during the year they have uh, like a yearly sort of clearance with some uh, discounts so maybe it will be a good chance for you to actually try them on and uh, that's about it that's pretty much what i had to say about uh, altan boutier paris in general uh, very nice shoes uh, i've been talking specifically with a person called pierre uh, who, who we organized this together he was very kind to let me have the shoes for about i would say two weeks and i had the, the the freedom to write my article to make my video very nice thank you very very much uh, mon ami and uh, that's about it i would like to know of course your thoughts down in the comments about Altan Boutier, about Tatinas, about Oxfords, Holcats, Norwegian construction, anything you can. And of course, if you're new to the channel, I'd love you to, you know, leave a like, uh, share the video, and of course, press the notifications, subscribe. It uh, helps me bring much more content. And that concludes today's video. But before you go, there's always a bad dad joke of the week. Recently, I broke up with my girlfriend, so I stole her wheelchair. Guess who came crawling back to me? <laughs> it was a little inappropriate, uh, but uh, thank, you. thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!